Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us for our second session of our weekly webinar series. Today's topics address not only the subject we had already planned to cover, but also a few questions we've received since our last webinar over our social media platforms, Telegram group and email. But we will address these in the second part of today's session. Our general topic of discussion is C plus 8 elements, meaning the Eden knowledge ecosystem, the C plus 8 technology components and data model, the knowledge vault and a few others. I would like to welcome today's speakers, Dr. Hardy Schlor, the creator of C plus 8 technology and Ovidu Toma, the CEO of CryptoData. Hello, I'm Hardy and welcome to our next uh, webinar. Hi guys, this is Ovidu Toma from CryptoData. I'm the CEO and co-founder of CryptoData. Let's begin with what is the Eden Knowledge Ecosystem, Hardy? So let me get right to the question. The Eden Ecosystem is a complete technology solution that includes a data processing element and includes all of the access technology that it involves. Is it based on blockchain? Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, blockchain plays a big component in that, in which we use blockchain technology to resolve a lot of questions, uh, a lot of problems that uh, uh, come together with the user management and with the um, permissions to receive what information from whom, at what time, through what application. All of that is resolved system, its license keys, and the blockchain. How do C plus A technology components fit into this ecosystem? Please give us a short description of what these components are. So C plus A essentially is a completely new data model, self-organizing, uh, operator bias free, and it allows actually any kind of data to populate into a database system in which everything ends up on the same standard, which means everything can be found through the same search tools and it can be used for machine to machine, for machine to human, human to machine interfaces in order to be understood, in order to be processed, in order to be used in real world applications. And how does this function within the Eden transactional system? Well, that is the clever thing about it, because when you have the Eden transaction system, which is uh, blockchain based, no longer do you need to deal with user accounts or with complicated uh, subscription processes, or is there still a live subscription or not, or did this user pay for its information or not. None of this will happen because simply the user buys license keys and he uses these license keys. Even if we want to give knowledge for free, let's say to a university, we give that university a fixed amount of license keys. They use them up and when they are used up, then that is the end of the free information. If they want more, we can give them more. So we control very much exactly how much access comes to the system, but anyone can go and buy license keys and use it. There will be many applications through which knowledge can be accessed, and they can just pick simply one, use the license keys, get the information they want, and that's all they ever need to do. Ovidio, could you please tell us what the Eden transactional system is comprised of? Indeed, that's a good question. I'm happy somebody raised this question. Eden, as an ecosystem, is comprised of two main verticals. Uh, the first and maybe the most important vertical and actually a unique feature in this market is the C plus 8 based collection of apps. So actually, apart from some other projects you might have uh, met in the past, uh, Eden is based on a real collection of software, of up-to-date running software, a collection of software relying on a C plus 8 data vault, the big knowledge vault. Uh, so from the very beginning, the ADN ecosystem relies on a collection of working apps, a suite of working apps for various fields of activity. On top of that, the, the second vertical of which ADN is comprised of is the tradable license key structure. Indeed, it's a structure we introduced to the market 
as a response to the one of the biggest concerns actually of the today's uh, IT industry. The main uh, the main concern in the IT industry is the the license based subscription software. As you might know, in the past, uh, some companies introduced the license keys as a way of unlocking or of way of gaining access to a software. But uh, indeed, uh, issuing a normal license key from the corporate, having it distributed over various companies, distributors, and then validating it locally, it comes with plenty of disadvantages or plenty of issues, such as validity, validation. As long as you validate the, the license key locally on a computer, there might be duplicates. Of course, duplicates means uh, non-genuine software or means software that's uh, actually pirated software. Uh, on, the same, on, on the other side, uh, a non-even uh, distribution layer uh, gets to gets the license uh, keys for having different price uh, price strategies, price schemes in various uh, continents or countries. So uh, at the same time, pricing and distribution is uh, has a plenty of issues and plenty of, of disadvantages nowadays. Uh, the tradable license key concept we introduce comes as a response to these issues and comes to solve these issues. Why? Because validation, first of all, validation of, uh, sorry, the issuing of the license keys occurs over a blockchain network. So we're sure of the number of unique license keys that there were issued and released to the market. Secondly, the transport and the um, um, trading of the license keys occurs in an organized frame, in an organized marketplace. So we're sure that the demand and offer, they meet together in a marketplace and then the, the price of the license key it actually reflects the real value of the software and of the utility of a license key. And at the same time, on the third, uh, the third side of, um, of it, at the moment of validation, at the moment of usage, you, uh, using a blockchain technology, using the TLK, the tradable license key ecosystem we developed, um, actually, it's vit virtually impossible to dually spend, to double spend, double use uh, the same license key. Why? Because the main property, the main advantage of a blockchain network is decentralization, transparency, and validation. So once a license key gets to be used to access uh, subscription for software, for a C++ collection based uh, software, you're 100% uh, you're secure and you're 100% safe that the license key will never be used again by a different individual. Hardy, you spoke about the data model and the analytics engine. How does this work? How does the C++ data model function? What are the processes, the steps? So obviously, um, this goes uh, step by step. We, we, as we say in, in industry language, we are parsing the information which comes in raw, such as a document, for example. And let's say a document is what we call an instance. And this document is gone through by natural language processing that takes literally every sentence, every phrase apart and recognizes such things as entities. These can be persons, events, they can be locations, they can be such things as people do, they can be uh, properties of something. All of these elements are understood and organized to the C plus eight uh, uh, technology and then therefore understood also in its what we call sequentiality. In other words, if you have a document that describes an event, what came first, what came then, and what came in the end. And so all of that is very easily preserved through C plus 8. What about the raw data that enters into the model? Where is it collected from and what is it comprised of? Well, raw data is obviously everything that has some kind of digital footprint. That can be a document, can be a spreadsheet, that can be a video, that can be an image, that can be an array of numbers such as a spreadsheet, that can be a, a complex numeric object such as, for example, the balance sheet of a company, that can be simply just a measurement of something like the temperature of Sydney at 12 o'clock noon yesterday. So all of that is information, all of that is data, and all of that can be absorbed 
in the C plus H data model to be placed into the uh, knowledge vault. Does the knowledge vault contain both the raw and the processed data? Oh, absolutely. Obviously, not every person in the world wants to have complex analysis done on data. People just want to check out something to use it. For example, they want to read uh, a novel by Plato and uh, they just go and say, I want that particular novel. I want that particular document. I want that particular uh, 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 study on some medical uh, matter or whatever it is. So they can just check out that document. Um, of course, for others that want to know more, we allow other forms of, of delivery. For example, a quantitative analysis, a qualitative analysis, a contextual analysis, and a combination of all of them. So it's uh, uh, very much what depth the user needs knowledge on in order to be satisfied with this, with this search. Let's go back a little bit to the Eden transactional system. So it's a blockchain-based monetary system that's exclusive to Eden. What elements and steps are involved here? It is comprised of, first of all, the, the access system. That means you need to have some kind of an internet interface to get to it. You then uh, say or state or, or, or uh, indicate what it is that you want. Do you want some raw knowledge? Do you want some analyzed knowledge? You then have a choice of applications that you choose. Then you put in your query. That query results in a estimation charge. You get that, that estimation, you pay for that estimation, you go ahead and you do your, your, your query, it's processed, you get the information back from the knowledge vault at the same time. How many applications do you think will eventually be built using the data from the knowledge vault? That is a really interesting question because what you really will find out is that there are literally only four different types of applications that you will ever use. You want something as it is, raw. You want, as I just mentioned earlier, you want it quantitative, qualitative, or you want it associative. And in each of these groups, there will be hundreds, thousands of applications that are specific maybe to medicine, specific to logistics, specific to geopolitics, uh, specific to whatever the field is, you are in. Um, and we obviously will work with a very large group of universities, more than 3,000 in fact, in order to develop these type of applications so that they then also become uh, uh, part of the of the knowledge world offering. Uh, of course, we invite third-party developers to build any number of applications that then uh, uh, can be licensed and and be hosted on our system. These applications they obviously use C plus A technology. Uh, you mentioned a few of its features previously, but can you go a little bit more in depth about the self-organization process and how it allows us to measure knowledge? Okay, well, this gets a little bit abstract, but I'm going to make it as, as, as simple as, as, as I can, because it actually works exactly like your, your brain works. Um, your, your, your brain, when, when you meet a person, no? you don't remember that person as uh, uh, this is um, uh, John Smith uh, living Main Street 134, uh, social security number XYZ, uh, telephone number XYZ, this is not how you remember people. You remember people as, oh, this was the tall man in the red hair that ran across the room when I first met him. This is how you memorize things. And this is exactly how our system is memorizing things, how it disambiguates them and how it, how, it, how it remembers and recalls them. And so the C plus 8 system starts, first of all, with causality. Causality is a fancy word, but it's really 
not anything other than transformation, behavior. Here we had something and this is what it became. Or that's how it behaved over seconds, minutes, years, weeks, whatever, whatever time frame you allow here. So that is the, the first element. And then we have what we call the eight cardinal experiences that people typically have, which is persons, give you an example. If you look at a beautiful big painting, there's nothing but trees and lakes and rivers and all kinds of stuff. And then you see one little person somewhere in the picture, boom, you immediately recognize that person because your brain looks for that. It scans for that automatically. And so our system does the same. It looks first for persons. Then it looks for things that are grouping. That can be persons, that can be abstract organizational things, that can be also a group of trees or school of fish or a flock of birds, anything that groups. The brain recognizes that and works with that. Um, events, locations, time, anything that comprises of what we call so easily technology. You know, there was technology 110,000 years ago when a humanoid took a big stone and he shaped it, made it sharp in order to crush the skull of an animal so he can kill it and eat it. That was technology. So anything that came in existence to do something with. And there's a few more. So uh, concepts would be, for example, one of them. Objects, general objects is another one of them. But as we find out, almost everything is a combination of all these nine elements. Causality plus these eight cardinal features plus two more things underlying, and that is any property of any of these features plus how they behaved. And then in which sequence all of that happened. And we record with C plus eight all of that seamlessly by simply using these these um, uh, processing tools, either for natural language uh, 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 and, and so on, and, and picture image recognition and so on. So when it all comes together, we can reenact in a digital environment exactly what the document described. So that also means that we, when we search for something, we don't have to always search for a whole document. We can search for behaviors or for events or for things that we want or know that maybe exist across 10,000 documents in various quantities and qualities. And to pull that out, that is actually the real knowledge you want. Our system allows exactly to capture that. Thank you. We are now going to address some of the questions we've received via our platforms. The first one is, what makes C plus 8 so special? What does it do that makes it possible for the knowledge vault to actually be realistically built with the vision that Eden is talking about? Uh, I think there is one, and, and really only one possible answer to this, and that is that the C plus 8 data model is the only known technology at this, at this stage. There may be others in the future, who knows, but today, right now, this is the only technology that really allows that everything we know, anything that has comprised of human knowledge since, since the Dark Ages, is possible to be united under one continuous model in one data space and accessible to the same data model, the same tools, to be available for anyone to ask any question. The next question is, how is it that having more data allows us to be able to better predict the future? In a in an earlier life, I was uh, quite heavily into astronomy and also to, to, to work with astronomers. And one of the things they did is when they uh, discovered near-Earth objects, these are typically asteroids that are on a potential collision course with Earth, um, we wanted to find them very early to understand what their exact 
trajectory was. So the minimum to calculate an orbit, you need three positions. And then you have a kind of vague understanding. If you have five, much better. If you have a hundred, you can actually be as precise as a kilometer on how close the orbit will come to planet Earth. So very clearly, the more positions you can measure of a dynamic process, the more you can understand the dynamic process and how it works. Of course, not everything is as continuous and linear as the orbit of a asteroid in space. So therefore, we have stochastic features. And again, stochastic features are very interesting because they are in a way nothing other than more complex measurements or as we call them signatures. So in machine learning, we want to, for example, in AI, we want to have as much collaborating data of a system in order to understand how its potential behavior is forward. And that all goes with calculating probabilities. So that's why a lot of data helps us to be much more precise on certain things. Another question is, what do you mean when you say generalizing unstructured data? What does that mean exactly? A generalization process is best explained by using an example. I mean, for every scientist, it's clear what is generalization. But let's say you're not a scientist. How do you explain generalization? Um, we all started with languages and, and letters when we first started writing things down that go back to the Egyptians some 8,000 years ago, 7,000 years ago. They had the hieroglyphs. They had some 57,000 hieroglyphs in order to tell their stories. They were quite limited because each hieroglyph was a special case. But there is a lot more special things in this world than just 57,000. So this was a very limited language. Along came the Chinese. They had 5,000 letters, and they could tell a lot more. But still, even that was somewhat limited. Then we came to the Roman language, 24, 26 letters. And we can write every book, we can do everything. But generalization goes much deeper. Then we have the human genome, or, the, or, or genes in general. We have four letters of four markers. And with these four markers, nature can describe absolutely every living thing on this planet. From every tree all the way to every human and every difference from human to human and tree to tree. And then we go finally down to the digital environment, zeros and ones. And it's even greater than that. So you see, the more you generalize into the fewer objects possible, the more you can express across a much larger space of information. And C plus 8 finds exactly the sweet spot of what you need to have as a minimum of variables to preserve a maximum of reality inside a digital environment. Uh, building on what you just said about a minimum of variables, how much of the data in the world do you think the knowledge fault will have to have in order to be able to be valuable as a decision support tool? This gets to where do you, where you, do, where you begin. Obviously, um, one of the important things is that we, when it comes to having to make fast decisions, that we preserve human transformation. And that starts, first of all, with reporting events. And this is done on many scales. Uh, the one we're most familiar with is, is, is the media, is news, is the big news agencies such as Reuters or AP Network News or CNN or MarketWatch and so on. 
all of them, they, they report on something that happened. But of course, you can go all the way down to small newsletters on, or local newspapers which uh, report things on a very local and much smaller level. Or you go into uh, events description of very specific things, things that happen in the area of medicine, in the area of physics, in the area of criminology, in the area of uh, science or, or uh, sociology or whatever you want. So I think news is the first thing that we want with some kind of depth and some kind of history in order to make it valuable that we have today, we have now. And today it is astonishing what kind of things we already can calculate with what we have. But our focus will be to increase that information dramatically and we will, in a later time, announce the next steps that we will take to make the knowledge world very quickly a absolute magnificent and, and, and fairly complete uh, uh, place to go to for any kind of, of working knowledge that you need and uh, 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 any kind of, of um, uh, reference uh, that you need to, to, to extract. Speaking of knowledge, where in the C plus 8 process is it created? Knowledge is actually created by the user. What we do to the Eden knowledge ecosystem is to prepare data to be accessed, to be queried, and be queried in such way that it is knowledge, one knowledge for one user at one moment. So knowledge occurs through the query by the tools and by the formulation of the query. So let's say if you can ask a question and that says, I would like to know about a person of that property of that behavior that has been at a certain place promoting a certain event at a certain uh, uh, time uh, about certain technologies or objects and so on. You can all put that in your query. You can be super, super precise. And maybe there is not any other person in this world ever going to ask this question. But for that user, that question is knowledge at that moment. And so when the system then processes that query and goes to all available data to put together the answer, then that answer is knowledge. But that knowledge is created in runtime because it also includes every bit of data, even that that only occurred a second ago. A second ago, something happened. It's in the knowledge world because the parsers work very fast. And at that moment, the query will include that knowledge. So that means the user could ask the same question every day. And he would get every day an answer that is relevant at that moment in time because it includes at that moment all information. So that's how knowledge is created. One of the questions we have received is this. I don't really understand what kind of applications will be made available from the C plus 8 system that could help me. Can you explain a few examples of what could be developed for common people that would help us in our normal lives? For common people, probably, probably, the first place to go is raw data raw information because the common person may not want to have a quantitative analysis of something uh, unless he gets really curious and then he becomes sort of a hobby scientist and then hobby investigator and then he wants to go deeper but even on 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 general knowledge there are two options one is that you can have just a simple search 
data in, data out, exactly the way it came. You can search for a particular document name, for a particular headline, uh, a particular tag or something like that. And you get it exactly just like, like, like you would get uh, through, through Google. Um, maybe a little bit uh, cleaner because um, you wouldn't get all, all the, 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 the irrelevant stuff in. But uh, it depends, of course, how you, how you uh, uh, ask it. However, you can get raw stuff by simply using the C plus 8 search panel, in which you can define what kind of document you are looking for that fulfills exactly the information that you really want. Let's say you, you, you want to know something about um, implants, dental implants in uh, the city of Augsburg in Germany. Uh, who, who does them? Who does the best job about them? Well, if there is any documents that are covering that with a location of Augsburg and, and uh, uh, with a behavior of uh, performing dental implants and so on, then all relevant documents, they could come from news, they could come from simple newsletters, they could come from publications, they could come from studies, they could come from everywhere, then would be pulled together for that particular question. And so this would be a very pointed uh, a result that we believe is much better than, than classic search engines and that will help the common user. And 90% of the common user will be satisfied with that. Once he goes in and says, let's, let's give me a quantitative analysis about uh, uh, all, all um, a dental work that is performed in the city of, of, of uh, uh, um, Augsburg, and let's say there are commentaries on the web about various dentists, then we could use a qualitative tool to measure the language in which people talk about various dentists in order to filter out which come out particularly favorable and which come out particularly unfavorable. So now you, you would be guided by your curiosity to use more complex analytical tools. You see, it's, it leads you as deep in as you want. And this is the beautiful thing about C plus 8 and the Eden knowledge ecology. Another consumer-related question is, can you explain a little bit how we, consumers, can expect the whole knowledge application products to be available to us? Could you give me some sort of image of how this will be presented in the market? So I think um, these are, are uh, uh, questions that uh, the marketing department uh, uh, answers much better than me as a scientist. But um, I would say this, the, the interfaces will be simple, they will be easy available, and they will be very straightforward. And uh, um, I think uh, there will be plenty of websites between now and the and, uh, uh, beginning of next year created that will not only show how you get to that knowledge, but also how you use various search tools and uh, analytics tools in order to access them. So it will be very simple. And don't forget one thing. Um, at one point, you know, somebody had to learn how to use the internet. Today we're laughing about it, but I remember back in 1994-95, uh, the internet was something so complicated and insurmountable that uh, most, uh, most, most people said, oh, this is too complicated, this is something just for people that have nothing else to do. And um, today, you know, every, every 80 and 90 year old person is having a smartphone in, in a smartphone using the internet all day. It will become very simple and, and, and natural to use our tool. Moving on to the slightly more technical questions about Eden, though this first one is more general. Why is data such a big buzzword nowadays? I think most people just see data as a bunch of numbers and scientific text, but we don't probably have the awareness that we could or should. Can you please shed some light here? Well, I think um, this goes much, much further than that. Um, you, you are accustomed to believe that money is really important. This is how we grow all up. 
And then we learned at some point oil is very important because it's energy. But I can assure you that in the new world that we are just entering now and already have entered, data is absolutely the new money of the future. Information is the new money of the future. Being competitive, being on top of things, being able to know what you need to know to succeed today and tomorrow and the day after on your job, socially, in your academic studies, um, person to person, it doesn't matter. Everywhere you need to have big data asking. Now, many people think that you know doing big data analysis is something that only big corporations do to do very complex marketing tasks. But I can assure you one thing, finding the right partner for you tomorrow that you're going to marry, you're going to be using big data. And that's just a fact, whether you like it or not. But that's where the world is going. So the best thing is to understand that and to work with that, to live with that, and to make big data your friend, your helper rather than something abstract that is opposite to you. Can you give some context as to why the Eden knowledge ecosystem is really such a big deal? Is there really nothing else out there looking to do the same thing or something similar? Well, the answer is no, there isn't. There are many, many, many projects out there that are doing things inside a silo. So there are thousands and millions of silos. Somebody is doing something really, really well in, let's say, the, the uh, area of breast cancer research. Or somebody is doing something really well in container logistics. Or somebody is doing something really well in industrial production systems. Or whatever it may be, you know, movies or, or literature or philosophy or whatever. However, for anyone where the question starts at point A and leads somewhere at point C that is in a totally different area, in a totally different silo of knowledge, you have to have our Eden knowledge ecology because it is borderless, boundless, it leads you and it draws from everywhere and it gives you the ability uh, and I like to use this example because it's something I read not, not too long ago, actually on, on our uh, system when I tested it. And there was uh, the, the question about how to do um, uh, a surgery, skin surgery, for burn victims. And what are the new technologies here? And it turned out that the emerging thing that one needs to really look at is 3D printing something I would have never thought of. But yet they learned how to actually recreate biologic uh, working cells with, with a CD printing mechanism. To just connect these far apart things into a solution can only happen by having something that connects everything without borders. Only C plus eight can actually do this. Most investors only focus on the price of the short term instead of the real value of the project. Can you tell me the benefits for long-term project investors? Actually, uh, sir, that's a very good question. I'm happy to, uh, you got it. Um, the short versus long-term benefits of such a project. So let's put it this way. Uh, any project in the blockchain industry usually comes with an idea and later with a proposal given to the community and in the end of the day, the project uh, team gets to realize or to start building up the idea. In our case, it's completely different. Why? Because, first of all, Eden project started having the entire C8 uh, knowledge-based apps already built. Basically, there is over 10 years of extensive work from Mr. Hardish Lur and Prisma Analytics to build such a huge knowledge vault and a collection of apps. So, at the very beginning, on a short term, having so much uh, software already developed, 
having such infrastructure already developed, having uh, so many patents and patented technology and a huge team to rely on. I would say the short term, uh, the short term results of our project are obvious. Uh, at the very beginning, launching the Eden tradable license keys comes with a fully running software with 100% registered and applied patents with uh, trial version of the software. So you can be sure at the very beginning the tradable license key has already an ecosystem where it can be used. There is actually the product application before the tradable license key is issued. At the same time, on the long run, I would look at Edain and I would look at the concept of tradable license keys. Uh, just consider this. We just defined a new concept of transactional license keys for a new concept of, I would say, one of the coolest software collections I've ever seen, relying on a big data vault, on a knowledge vault of the entire, let's say, internet universe. So uh, if you're asking me on the long term whether I believe Edain is a successful project or will be a successful project, I would say Eden will not be a successful project. It, was, it will be an amazing project. Uh, due to the concept of tradable license keys, and I'm pretty sure plenty of corporates will follow this concept and will follow this um, approach in generating, tra trading, and validating license keys. At the same time, on a big data project, I have never seen one single project proposal as ambitious as the C plus 8 project. And don't forget, C plus 8 already exists. So if you're asking me on the long run whether I believe or not in the technology, I think it will be amazing and I think it will be a disruptor in the field of big data, queries, live data, live data analytics, and as well, tradable license keys. Can you give a list of one to three killer features of this project that makes it ahead of its competitors? One to three killer feature. I could uh, probably number an hour and a half of features, of cool features, killer features of this project. But I would name a few of them, and I would mention very few of them, actually. One of the best features in our industry, in the blockchain industry, is the demand. Every single project, every tradable asset should generate somehow demand, because it's for nothing to generate offer, if you don't have demand. If you ever wondered whether technology will have a future or not, please take a look on the number of 10, 15, 20 patents already applied between 1999 and 2019, 2020. Mr. Schlör and Prisma Analytics all together applied more than 20 technology patents for this project, for, for the C plus 8 actually based, based project. So whether you're asking uh, the technology will be up and running, for sure it, that's a killer feature. Uh, another killer feature, I would say the team. As you might know, in every single IT project, the, one of the most reliant, reliable, reliant, uh, important components is the human resource. Uh, if we're looking at our, our, at our team, at our teams actually, the entire project is made and created, formed, advised by highly trained, skilled, reputable, academical, engineering, uh, developing individuals. So whether you're asking is the team, has the team the proper background to develop such a project? You'd bet we do. What legislation governs the transactional system in order to protect the user? Hey, thanks, Sarah. That, that's also a good one. I'm, I'm very happy when, uh, when, you, when you pick exactly the tricky ones because I like the challenges. Um, on the legislation, on, on the governing, I would say. On the governing side, again, we should split the discussion in two verticals. First of all, the IT vertical, the blockchain vertical, the blockchain governing. Uh, that's ERC-20, so we're pretty sure the TLK, the tradable license keys, the Eden tradable license keys, will be generated, traded, and validated using a blockchain network, which is already validated as a concept, is validated already as a uniqueness and as a transparency, as from the transparency point of view. So uh, whether you're asking uh, if the governing 
the IT governing of the TLK is valid as a protocol, is valid as an idea or a concept, uh, be sure it is because the ERC20 has more than six or seven years already of fully development, fully community, community development. So for sure the ERC20 is a, govern, a valid governing uh, legislation in terms of IT. Knowledge seems to be a term or concept that lots of people don't really understand. So can you provide some explanation about how Eden will make knowledge kind of sexier in the context of its value through Eden's vision? Well, I don't know. To me, knowledge is something very sexy. It's something that keeps me up at night, uh, something that makes me wake up at night and think about things. I am I'm fascinated by knowledge. And um, I think if you're curious, if you live in a world in which you must know and need to know and want to know, then you want to go after knowledge about things. So I can't imagine, you know, one is not interested in that. The problem is that knowledge is a pre-contaminated word, pre-contaminated by an academic process in which knowledge became sort of a burden, you know, something you must work hard to get. No, you don't need to work hard. You need to just be clever. You just need to come to C plus eight and describe what it is you are curious about and the knowledge will come. Yeah, it's called knowledge. Call it something else, you know. Call it a C plus eight query if you think that's more sexy. I don't think it is. I think knowledge is very sexy, but in any case, Knowledge is not hard to get when you have the right tools to just ask any question you want. And this is what we try to provide. This last question is quite interesting. As Eden sounds really cutting edge and a first of its kind, how much of Eden's success do you think will be from trial and error? Well, we had quite some trial and error already when we started you know, building the, the, the system I think we, we, we become pretty clear now where we, where we need to go. But trial and error, as we all know, never stops. Whenever you reach for a higher plateau, then you have some trial and error. And we always will reach for another higher plateau. We will never rest and never say, OK, we got the knowledge world, we're done, we can go home and put our feet up and watch TV. That's not how we're going to work. We will make that knowledge world and that Eden knowledge ecosystem more perfect, more encompassing, more up-to-date, more inclusive, more usable, more addressable, more addressable for, for audiences that typically you, you would never reach, but also make it usable for machines, for machine-to-machine -machine knowledge queries and so on. So there is much to be done. And yes, we will have always some trial and error, but the more of the base we build, the fewer errors we expect, and the more smooth our trials will go. Okay, thank you both so much for your insight, our community members for their questions, and our viewers for their interest in our project. But we're not done yet. We still have further questions from you, so I'd like to pass the live Q&A to our project manager, Chris Edwards. Hi, Chris, and welcome.
Okay, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. And Sarah, thank you for the handover. Um, Hardy, we're gonna move into the live questions section here. Um, hope you're ready for uh, the, the few that we've got to, um, to conclude here within our hour time frame. So Hardy, number one, um, which of these aspects is important for you? One, increasing token price and value. Two, empowering platform development. Three, building community trust. Or four, expanding partnership globally. And in what order, if you can recall them all? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you will, you will, you will probably help me uh, with the, mm -hmm. with, with, with all of them. So <clears throat> first of all, uh, the first one that was uh, about uh, inc increasing token value. Um, that's fortunately the one I have to be least concerned with. And the reason is that there's a finite amount of tokens and there is an underlying fastly expanding amount of knowledge that will accumulate it and data that will be accumulated in, in the uh, um, reservoir in the knowledge world. So the, the, the value will, 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 will go up. Uh, there is, that's just a normal thing. And um, it's a good thing. So the next, the next thing was, um, what were the other yeah. three? Uh, the other number two is empowering platform development. Well, um, obviously this is something that will happen automatically. When we bring on the amount of data, the type of data that we are planning to do, I think people will come from everywhere to 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 develop the the platform itself is not so much important as the access applications the the platform that we have chosen is one that i cannot foresee it over the next 200 years need to change because it represents exactly one to one what we uh, pull out of, of, of data that comes from the outside, that represents in some way reality, that then gets stored in our system to access that. If you, if you mean this platform that, we will need lots and lots of, 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 of uh, collaborators. Fortunately, we will have them. We have to find 10 verticals in which we are defining the 10 major areas of, of knowledge. And in each of them, we will have NGOs, universities, uh, all kinds of private industry that will come, that will be interested in using the knowledge world, especially because the knowledge world gives them an, an opportunity to not just look at their part of interest, but to actually compare that with all the other knowledge that is in the system. So they will come and they will provide a lot of, of, of developments of applications, specific applications. For example, a knowledge application that can be used in a doctor's office is obviously a totally different one and has different uh, features and different uh, front ends than uh, one that you would use for logistic operations to drag containers across the planet. So there, there will be thousands of, of uh, applications all coming together to draw from the same platform, from the same system platform, from the same data platform. Then the third one, what was that, Chris? Building community trust. Building, community building trust. trust in the marketplace. So trust in, in the marketplace, I think, will come mostly from a super transparent system and that we have. So there isn't any, any tricky AI that nobody knows why and how it came up with what result. Uh, the C plus eight system is, 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 is completely uh, clear and, and transparent. And the way that knowledge is created does not rely on humans. It doesn't rely on operators. It doesn't rely on any judgment of any human being. It is completely built in, generalized, and applied across all the data, all the information, all the results. 
And so therefore, I think uh, a trust will be very easy to achieve from day one. And the fourth one, what was that? Yeah, lastly, four is uh, expanding partnership globally. It will happen automatically. I think the soon as people will re 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 realize just how powerful the knowledge world is, how uh, uh, useful these applications will be, and how easily they gain access. I think uh, this will be a self runner. We don't have to do much marketing yet. Yeah, certainly um, to, to end the question globally, or, or rather in which order, I, I think it's probably fair to say all of them are, are rather important. Uh, trust is, is perhaps paramount for, for uh, any product achieving success in a marketplace. Probably no different with ours. Would you agree? Absolutely. No question about it. So I think we have all the, all the elements exposed that will gain us trust. And they're very clear. There is uh, everything out in the open, and and I think people people have, will will be very difficult to find anything to distrust about the knowledge world. Okay, Hardy. Question number two. This is from Jonas D. Uh, in addition to the applications presented on the website that use the CFOSA technology, are there other applications that are currently in dev in development? And if so, when might they be released? Oh yeah. So uh, as I as I said uh, earlier, <clears throat> there are four groups of of of, of applications. Uh, this has more to do in how they uh, produce knowledge. Uh, if it is um, uh, comparative, is it uh, quantitative? Is it qualitative? Is it uh, uh, raw? Um, but behind each of these, uh, there is a number of of uh, um, variations that are already under the planning and they will be released one after the other so the, there will be uh, not we have to wait you know for months and months you know for something to come about um, if there is a new way to 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 create and th the beautiful thing about the way we are now building these applications they are plugins of functionality and they can be arranged in all kinds of different ways and they can have all kinds of different front end types that are typical and 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 best work with the type of data and the type of industry in which they are supposed to bring uh, um, uh, um, information so to bring new applications will be extraordinarily fast and it will be a waterfall that will occur Okay, listen, we've got a couple of uh, folks in with us uh, on Zoom here now, some, some uh, uh, members of the community. One um, is uh, Yasin Ahmad. Uh, Mr. Ahmad, are you, uh, are you still with us here? I think you're muted. If you're, it would appear that your account is muted. Can you unmute? There you go. And you have yes. Dr. Schlower here. Go, go for it, man. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I really played around with the, on the, on the demo platform a bit. Yeah. I watched the demo that you did. It's exciting. I see where it's going. It is an amazing project and I consider it to be something that will, as was mentioned earlier in the other stream, a, it will shift the paradigm, the way we think, the way we do things, it levels the playing field, it has so much great potential. So my question is, and I'm excited, I want to learn more about how, I, I'm an IT engineer, I'm a telecommunications engineer, so I work, I'm a technologist, so I work in that field and I speak to a lot of people who are who would be interested in this? I myself have a partnership in Kazakhstan with the data center myself and my company. So we're looking to expand. I look at this as something that will get out there and really be able to make a difference and level the playing field and give people, every company, individuals, it doesn't matter, it, it, it will grow. So not to be too long-winded. <laughs> no, no, it's fine, it's fine. What, what are we going to, how, is there a, a, a plan, and I'm sure there is, so that people like myself who want to get out there and basically introduce companies to this, to 
to be trained up to learn all of the ins and outs. I played around a lot with it. It's exciting and I'm ready to go. So you, you if, if, if I read a question, what you just said, by the way, thank you very much for your nice and kind words about our project. Um, basically the question that I hear here is, will there be training? Will there be perhaps classes? Will there be uh, some guidance in how to use these, these, these applications? Yes, there will be. Uh, we are going to prepare a, a number of workshops in which people can uh, come in and uh, uh, we, we show them how to do stuff. One of the most exciting things will be, and I have been uh, showing these, these applications to all kinds of people, and um, the, the, the really interesting thing here is you can sit there and for 15 minutes, you are searching about a, a, a particular event, um, let's say some, some uh, um, uh, event in, in Davos last year about a particular geopolitical subject. And then somewhere comes up, somebody uh, mentions uh, cancer and you use the exact same tool and the exact same interface. And you now start searching and looking at a particular problem in cancer and how it relates to um, environmental uh, stress and how it relates to this and that. And then you, you get to another subject and then you are taking that subject now and in the same tool, you are now searching on that, getting these very innovative, quantitative, qualitative and, and associative uh, uh, feedbacks. So the, the, the point here is, people will have to actually learn that these applications do not limit them that and also that they are not overburdened so one could very honestly and truthfully say well you know google can do that you can go into google and you search for cancer research and then the next thing is you search for a tv program and then the next thing is you are searching for your favorite car the, the, the problem is, is that you get this overbearing 10,000 links that you, you need to go very deep and very long and you need to do very, very skillful searches to get finally to where you kind of need to go. And by the time you get there, you already got, you know, seduced by some idea in the data to go somewhere else. So on this particular C plus eight panel, it will actually show you, this is where we will pay a lot of attention. This is what we're going to take to teach people how to use the C plus eight panel. And more importantly, the new C plus eight panel that is coming in, in, in which we add a couple of very cool filter features, um, how you can box in exactly the thing that you want to know and within what context you want to know that and so on. So yeah, there will be there will be all kinds of workshops. There will be uh, also online. There will be videos. The, all these things are, are all coming and uh, all all under 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 production now. Yeah, and uh, to add to that, uh, Yasin, certainly know that you can reach out to us anytime. You know, if you've got some level of engagement you'd like to have with Eden. Uh, you can you can reach out to us anytime. We'll you know our door is open. We'll always respond to you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Cheers. Th thanks so much for joining. Um, we've got one more uh, user here in the Zoom room with us, um, and it's either Adi or Adi. Um, Adi, are you still here with us? And is it or uh, Adi or Adi? <laughs> Adi, Adi. I think maybe Adi. Okay. I don't. Uh, I don't uh, know that Adi is still with us. I see him still in the room, but uh, not responding. Listen, um, a couple more questions, um, if I may. Um, Hardy, we've got um, we've got Golden Crypto Girl who was in here with us and had to had to uh, leave. And she's left uh, her question as, what other angles are in place for lead generation to the system in order to ensure mass adoption, number one? 
Um, number two, what will ensure token success in the future when other models, uh, when others model this system or copy, mm -hmm. I suppose, and uh, three, and offer better access. So let's start with number one. What other angles are in place for lead generation to the system in order to ensure mass adoption? So you've kind of already okay. touched on this, but yeah. Now, also, first of all, you can not assure mass adoption on anything. Doesn't matter. You cannot even assure mass adoption on eating, uh, uh, even when everyone is starving. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, but what you can do is, if everyone is 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 starving or hungry, you put some very very delicious food in front of them, and say this is available. And then people will adopt it because they discover the need, they discover the usefulness in taking that. What you need to do is you need to create a product that is so seductive, that is so adaptive, that is so aligned with the needs of a user that he automatically wants to use it. And this is exactly what we are doing here. Uh, we we are we are not going to spend a lot of effort on marketing. We're going to spend a lot of effort to build a product that never was available to a user in the form that we make it available, and that assures us mass adoption. Chris, you are muted. So the next question um, from Golden Crypto Girl. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, no, we're going to go to Marianne. Are you with us, Marianne? You're muted. I see yes, you. Yes, there you go. Mm -hmm. Ask Ask Dr. Hardy. <laughs> I, I listen very careful. I'm not a very technical guy, but now I learn I to understand. And maybe in the next sure. section, I will I'll put some question. For now, I'm OK. Thank you. <laughs> OK, no problem. Uh, then, Hardy, we're going to conclude with this next question, uh, final question from uh, Gigi Abis. And the question is, this is a two-parter. Uh, Dr. Schlower, what will Eden's greatest achievement be in five years from now? Excuse me, it's a three-part. In five years from now, in 20 years, uh, and what visible difference will result from Eden's knowledge vault being developed successfully, uh, so presumably uh, to humanity? Well, I think the 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 answer for 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 all of that is hopefully going to be the same. The Eden knowledge ecosystem is really the first credible system that will make available to ever to every woman, man, and child anywhere in the world at the absolute lowest cost possible, any kind of knowledge needed at any given moment. Now, there was somewhere this five year and 20 year in there. Uh, obviously, we cannot populate into one system in, 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 in one year or even two years, everything that ever has been created by 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 humankind anywhere on this planet but what we want to reach long before five years is a critical mass where 90 percent of the people will find 90 percent of what they want to know within about two years and i think within 20 years we can achieve with the help of the partners with the help of all the universities that we are going to align, with the help of um, some bodies of the UN, and so on, we hope that at that point, we are going to be the definitive knowledge utility of the planet. You know, a utility is like water or gas or electricity. You flick the switch and you expect it to be there. It's there automatically. You just expect it. And so that is what we want to do and achieve with analyzed knowledge. Information that is truly useful, is trusted, and is available anywhere, anytime to anyone, 
in the size, quantity, and in the language that it is needed. Back to you, Chris. Okay, uh, folks, we're going to wrap up uh, webinar two, uh, C plus eight system elements, and um, alert you guys or remind everybody here rather that uh, next week uh, on Thursday at the same time, uh, 1700 UTC, we have webinar three, which is TLK explainer and presentation. No, excuse me, I'm sorry, it's the Knowledge Vault. Webinar number three is the Knowledge Vault. So join us next week, next Thursday. Uh, Hardy and um, Ovidio will also be presenting uh, Knowledge Vault. And uh, we look forward to seeing everybody back with us again in a week's time. Thank you.